Good morning, I'm meteorologist Joe Fitzwater. I wanted to provide an update to the severe weather risk here as we head into tomorrow on Wednesday. And this is a look at the current Storm Prediction Center outlook for Wednesday. And you might notice compared to yesterday, they've actually dropped the slight risk a little farther down to the south. So we're looking at a one out of five severe risk, a pretty low risk, but still a risk across parts of West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, Southern Ohio. Then once you get down toward parts of uh, far southern Kentucky, down toward the Somerset area, back toward far western parts of Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, that's where we're looking at a two out of five for severe weather. And then, of course, the better threat is even farther down to the south toward the Atlanta area, toward the Chattanooga area, and that's where we're looking at a three out of five for severe weather. So, again, this is for Wednesday, particularly during the late afternoon into the evening hours. Now, with the severe weather risk being dropped a bit here across the region from the Storm Prediction Center, you might say, well, there's probably not much of a risk, but there's still some signs that we're going to have some storms around here as we head into Wednesday afternoon and evening. I wanted to take some time to show you this. First off, we'll show some of the uh, high-res models just to kind of get an idea of what they're showing, and then kind of show you some of the information and some of the ingredients as to why they're showing what they're showing. So this is Wednesday morning uh, here across the Tri-State. Very quiet start here. And as uh, we put this into motion, you'll notice that we do have this line of storms uh, that starts to uh, congeal together across parts of central Kentucky and eventually into parts of southern Ohio. And watch what happens here as we head into the afternoon. We get a decent line that works together. In fact, there is According to this model, a good bit of instability out there to allow for this storm, this line of storms to develop along this cold front that's going to be pushing through the region. And this is not just on this particular model. This is uh, one of the WARF models. We'll show another one of them. And uh, it kind of shows the same thing here. Again, this is the uh, late morning into the early afternoon. It runs into a little bit of instability across our region. And then we have uh, this broken line of scattered showers and thunderstorms. We can look at some of the other models here. And they kind of all are agreeing on the same thing, that we're going to have a broken line working its way through the region during the late afternoon into the early evening. So again, I think if you are uh, looking for things to do, if you're uh, wanting, looks like the uh, NAM 3 is not in, by the way. Uh, if you're looking for uh, dry time on Wednesday, you're going to be in good shape. A lot of the day is going to be dry here. And again, this is Wednesday morning on the GFS, very dry couple of sprinkles during the late morning, early afternoon. So a lot of the plans Wednesday afternoon are going to be fine, but by the evening hours we'll have that line of scattered showers and thunderstorms that will be pushing its way through. And again, another model that is showing this uh, is the GFS. So just about every model is kind of hinting that there's going to be a, a broken line of showers and thunderstorms here as we head into Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. Now, a couple things that we wanted to uh, look at here. And this is kind of uh, some of the things that we look at in the background to kind of figure out where the severe weather threat is going to be here. And uh, what we're looking at here is uh, CAPE, which is uh, available energy for these storms to utilize. So basically, uh, here's the uh, scale down here. I'm going to try and zoom this out a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. But basically, what you're going to be wanting to see here are some of those higher values. Now, we don't get a lot of energy available with this system, but there is going to be some available. So we uh, move into this afternoon, there'll be a small amount, we could see a rumble of thunder. And then as we head toward Wednesday afternoon, there we go, there is that tongue, we get a tongue of um, of, of energy that's going to be available. And that's a thousand joules of cake, that's a lot of energy uh, for these storms to work with. Now obviously, there is going to be more energy farther down to the south here across the parts of Tennessee, down toward the Georgia area, and that's where that enhanced risk uh, has been issued here by the Storm Prediction Center. But there's still going to be some energy available for our storms to utilize. So again, this is not going to be a widespread severe weather event by any stretch uh, here across the Tri-State, but there is going to be the chances uh, for a couple of strong storms uh, to be around. Another tool that we like to use is called uh, the significant tornado parameter when we start talking about rotating storms. And here's the scale down here. I really don't usually get too excited about this uh, tornado threat until we get to around one. And as you notice here, we're not going to really get to that here as we head toward Wednesday afternoon. Uh, right there. That's probably about as high as it gets here. And yeah, that's a, that's a good half to maybe three-quarters in spots here as we look at the scale. 
uh, especially across parts of southern Kentucky. We get close to that one area. So it's something that we'll keep an eye on, but the tornado risk not that high. This is going to be primarily, I think, a damaging wind risk. And there's going to be some gusty winds out there regardless Wednesday, whether you're in a storm or not. It's a pretty potent storm system that's going to be working its way uh, through the region. We can look at a couple other things. Again, we'll show the GFS model. We'll put this into motion here as we go into uh, Wednesday afternoon. There, there comes that uh, line of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Again, that's the GFS right there. You can see a pretty potent line of storms that works its way through uh, through the early evening. So that's around 8 p.m. Uh, we can show the European model as well. Uh, again, we get through Tuesday. We get that dry slot there for your Wednesday morning. Then as we get toward the afternoon, a broken line of scattered showers and thunderstorms works its way through the area. Notice even uh, on the European, though, that the stronger storm activity, if I can get this in the right spot, is a little farther down uh, to the south here. So we get toward uh, 8 p.m. Again, Tennessee, southern Kentucky, down into Georgia. That's where we're seeing the best risk for severe weather. But that's not to say we can't see a couple of storms that will be on the stronger side here across uh, parts of West Virginia. Now, you may be talking to yourself or wondering and saying, hey, there's not going to be a lot of moisture for these storms to work with. But you would be wrong. I was looking at some of these dew point values here as we head toward uh, Wednesday afternoon. Those are dew points that are going to be in the 60s. Uh, so it's almost going to feel a touch humid out there here late Wednesday afternoon. And again, those air temperatures will be very warm. Uh, in fact, I think some of us are going to make a run toward 80 degrees here as we head toward uh, the afternoon. Uh, there's some of those temperatures, and that's showing mid-70s here on the WERF model. Show the uh, other MRF, WERF model just for some comparison. But again, some very warm air that's going to be in place here uh, as we head toward Wednesday afternoon. And there is going to be some ample moisture in place uh, to support some of these storms. So again, uh, not a lot of available energy. This is what I was looking at here. Uh, the WERF model not showing a ton of energy. But again, this is showing a threshold of 500 caves. So we've still got two or 300 caves to work with. That's not a lot, but it's something. And the more concerning thing as far as damaging winds, there is a lot of wind energy in the atmosphere. This is a look at that. And uh, this is for Wednesday afternoon uh, into the evening hours. A lot of wind energy is going to be available here for these storms. So again, even though we don't see or are not expecting a widespread uh, severe weather event, this is going to be something that we're going to have to keep a close eye on here as we head through the next uh, 24 hours. Again, the uh, timing for these storms will be Wednesday afternoon, particularly during the late afternoon toward dinner time, through around 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening. I think once we get past that, we'll start to lose the energy uh, from the sun, and we'll see things really begin uh, to calm down here across the region. But again, uh, just a quick update. We're looking at uh, a, a Area 1. This is a 1 out of 5 for severe weather for most of West Virginia, really for the majority of our area. According to the Storm Prediction Center, it's a 2 out of 5 farther down to the south, across parts of far southern Kentucky, western parts of Virginia, and then down into parts of Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina. We're looking at a level 3. So again, uh, this is not a storm system where you need to be scared. I always tell folks, uh, be prepared, not scared. So of course, you can download the Storm Tracker 13 app. And uh, I like to use it when I go out and hike because uh, if it starts lightning, uh, if lightning gets detected while I'm hiking, I want to get out of there uh, so I don't get stuck in a storm. So I use it uh, primarily for that for me. And then I also have uh, some spots uh, for, for temperatures as well as uh, for watches and warnings. So hopefully that can be helpful to you. And uh, again, uh, this is something we'll keep a very close eye on here over the next 24 hours. And uh, we'll have another video that will be coming out uh, tomorrow morning with the latest on what we can expect here in the Tri-State. Hope this video was helpful. And in the meantime, hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the warm weather. And we've got some much colder air arriving for this weekend. We will talk about that more in depth here in a slightly longer video here as we head into tomorrow. But in the meantime, have a wonderful day.